Hello, this is the third in a series of five videos about survey research in the digital age. Covers material in chapter three of Bit by Bit. So in the first video in this series, I talked about the third era of survey research. And in this video, I wanna talk about the idea of computer administered interviews, which I think is an important part of the third era of survey research. So in the past, survey interviews have generally been done by humans, um, either over the phone uh, or in person. And I think increasingly we will move towards computer administered interviews. And this enables change and it also requires change. So as we move into this new medium, there is no reason to think that we should continue to do things as we've done them in the previous medium. So let me give you an example of this. When um, TV first came out, um, some of the first TV soap operas to make them what they did is they took a radio soap opera and then they put a camera in front of it and just recorded it. And so what they said is, oh, look, we have a soap opera for TV. But really what they had was a radio soap opera put on TV. And so I would argue that what we have with a lot of digital age surveys is we have face to face surveys or telephone surveys put onto the Internet or put onto digital devices. And really what we should be doing is thinking more broadly about what kinds of new affordances are offered by these new digital technologies and what kinds of changes are required by them. We shouldn't just necessarily continue to do what we've done in the past. So to give an example of this, I'd like to talk about this paper by Schober et al. So the design of this paper is they had, um, uh, it's a four, four uh, cell design. So they interviewed people either um, with humans asking the questions or through an automated procedure, through either text messages or voice through phone calls. And so the idea is that if you're interviewing someone with a smartphone, you might think, well, it's a phone, I'll just call them. And so basically this is like continuing over the way we've collected data in the past. Or you might say, oh, they have a smartphone. That enables me a new medium, to new way to collect the data through text messages. And so why don't we try that? And so this paper compared these four survey modes for people with iPhones, uh, either human or automated, either text or voice. And the main finding of the paper is that the interviews through texting yielded higher quality data. So in the paper, they formalize this and go through a lot of the, the reasons why they think it is. But I think the main idea is that when people have a new form of communication, some ways of using that are more natural than others. So texting seems to be more convenient for respondents than talking on the phone when texting is an option. So now what I'd like to do is give you three examples of papers that um, that take advantage of the tools of the digital age to collect data in new ways. So this is a paper by Sugi et al. Uh, that was studying the process of prisoner reentry. This is people after they get out of jail, how do they reacclimate into society? And so one of the key components of that is to be able to get a job. And so she's studying the job search of these people. And so the job search of people coming, uh, people just leaving prison is actually uh, quite complicated. It changes a lot from day to day. And so if you were to do a survey of these people, let's say every month, you would be missing a lot of information in the day-to-day -day churn of these people's search for employment. And so what uh, Sugi did was give all of these people mobile phones and then use those phones as a platform to do ecological momentary assessment. This is the idea of pushing people survey questions at different times of their life. And this allows you to measure in much finer detail uh, the kinds of things that people are doing in the moment rather than having them try to recall a lot of things that have happened in the past. So ecological momentary assessment, the idea of taking one big survey where you might ask someone about everything they did in the past month, breaking that into lots of little surveys and pushing those out to people at different times or in different places is a way that we can ask people questions in new ways. So you can read more from uh, this paper to learn more about how this enabled her to get a high resolution uh, 
picture of what happens to people coming out of prison as they search for work. Another paper that also reimagines how we ask is this paper by Coyle et al. about real and perceived attitude agreement in social networks. So what they were interested in is how much we actually um, agree with the people around us. So, and how much we think we agree with the people around us. So for example, the, it, it, may, it, it, is a, um, it appears to be the case that we have a large amount of agreement with the people that we're connected to in terms of attitudes. So some of this though may actually be an illusion in the sense that we are projecting our attitudes onto other people when we don't actually know them. Or it may be that we choose not to talk about um, issues that we might not agree with our friends about. And so what they wanted to measure is how much perceived attitude agreement there was among friends and then how much real attitude agreement there was. And so, to do that, they needed a lot of people answering attitude questions about themselves and their friends to answer those questions about themselves. And they needed then those people to guess about their friends. So this requires lots of uh, network data, which is hard to collect through random digitizing techniques. And so what they ended up doing was creating a game on Facebook. Uh, this was around the time where lots of these quizzes were very popular. And so they turned it into a quiz where you would ask questions about, answer questions about your own political attitudes. And then you would see pictures of your friends and you would have to guess their political attitudes. And then if your friends also participated in the study, the researchers were able to compare your guess um, to what that person actually said. So the, the key about this quiz though is actually really fun. And so the way that they were able to collect the data is by turning what is often a kind of bad user experience that you get in a survey into something that's much more like a quiz or a game that you would play online. And that allowed them to collect the data they needed to measure this difference between real and perceived attitude agreement. And of course, one of the main findings of the paper is that there is substantially more perceived agreement than there is actual agreement. So in other words, your personal networks are probably more diverse in terms of attitudes than you may perceive. So I encourage you to read this paper to learn more about their findings. And then the last paper is um, one that I did with a colleague named Karen Levy. And this is a paper that we call uh, about a new kind of survey that we call wiki survey. So in this project, we took this idea of the radio soap opera and the TV soap opera really seriously. And we said, what if we imagine trying to just forget everything we learned about surveys and try to recreate surveys as you would if, if you were thinking of like a digitally native tool. So we looked at other online information aggregation systems like Wikipedia and what kind of prop measurement properties those had and tried to combine what people have learned about user-generated content online with what people know about survey research to create these, this new hybrid called a wiki survey. And I'll talk in much more detail about the wiki surveys in the final lecture uh, video in this series called Additions and Extensions. So to wrap up, um, we can and should take advantage of the tools of the digital age to ask people questions in new ways. We shouldn't just continue to ask people in the ways that we have in the past. As you move to a new medium of communication, you should think about how you can adjust your data collection to that medium. So this, again, is the third in a series of videos. Thank you.